Welcome back to this week's episode of The Emily Show. And though I have been traveling all around, today we are not talking about BravoCon, the Bravo First, or anything like that. We are catching up on the Navarro Cheer lawsuit and Coach Monica, because right at the end of all of my travel, she posted something on Instagram that absolutely caught my eye talking about her lawsuit being dismissed. But it wasn't just that the lawsuit was dismissed, it's that she has been cleared by USA Cheer. And we need to talk about that because when I dug into the court documents, even though Coach Monica just posted this on Instagram, what, November 12th, a lot of this actually went down back in May. This lawsuit was filed originally in April, 2023. So we need to talk about what's been going on since April to the fact that Coach Monica is sharing about the lawsuit being dismissed and what the legal documents have to say about it. So let's get into it. Welcome to The Emily Show. I'm Emily D. Baker, the internet's go-to legal analyst and big fan of the cursey words. I've been a licensed attorney for over 17 years. I'm a former prosecutor, and I break down the legal side of pop culture and entertainment stories we can't stop talking about. We should just get into it. Let's go. Life can be unpredictable, but getting life insurance shouldn't be. With Policy Genius, you can find life insurance policies that start at just $292 per year for $1 million in coverage. Some options offer same day approval and avoid unnecessary medical exams. Policy Genius knows how valuable your time is, and their technology makes it easy to find the right life insurance policy. For you, you can compare life insurance quotes from America's top insurers in just a few clicks. And Policy Genius has licensed award-winning agents who can help you find the right fit so it's not confusing. And they don't work for the insurance companies, so you don't have to worry that they're recommending one company over another. They're there to work with you. Policy Genius is for anyone who has people that depend on them. It's never too early to start. And if you haven't started yet, now is the time. It's no wonder they have thousands of five-star reviews on Google and Trustpilot. Your family deserves a peace of mind and a life insurance policy can help give it to them. Head to policygenius.com slash lawnard or click the link below to get your free life insurance quotes and see how much you can save. That's policygenius.com slash lawnard. Let's get back to today's show. So back in April, when this original lawsuit was filed, I covered all of the ins and outs of the complaint, what was being charged, what some of the challenges with the charges were. This is a civil lawsuit filed in federal court in Texas between former Navarro cheerleader Maddie Lane and at the time suing Navarro College, Coach Monica, Michael Landers, Elizabeth Fillins, and Salvo Amico or Salvatore Amico. But after that lawsuit was filed and that lawsuit accused Coach Monica and the college essentially of covering up a sexual assault that is alleged to have happened to Maddie Lane. And again, this is a civil lawsuit that is going forward. So these are accusations. This has not been through court, but those are the accusations made in this lawsuit that there was a sexual assault covered up by the college by Coach Monica. And some of the charges against the college are that they had a duty to warn under Title IX and failed to protect Uh, the students, and particularly this former cheerleader, Maddie Lane. So these are the allegations, and if you want the entire complaint, I go over that in that episode that I will link for you. When I saw what Monica posted on social media, I was like, that's interesting. Let's dig back in to what's going on. And when I did that, I found that a first amended complaint had been filed in May. And when the first amended complaint was filed in May, it dropped everyone but Navarro College and Salvatore, who is in this case, the one accused of perpetrating the sexual assault on Maddie Lane. So it narrowed down the amount of charges in this case or the amount of claims in this case to just the violation of Title IX and a civil assault. Again, this is a civil lawsuit. So those are the two remaining claims in the first amended complaint that was filed May 25th, 2023, just about a month after the original lawsuit was filed. So it was really interesting 
to go back and pull the court documents and see it wasn't till November 12th that Monica had spoken publicly about the case being dismissed. So we're gonna look at what um, she said on Instagram by way of people. I really like the way people reports cases like this. They were the first outlet that I saw that picked this back up to talk about the fact that the case was dismissed. Lots of lots and lots of outlets picked this case up when it was first filed and were quick to point a finger at Coach Monica and be like, this is what she's being accused of and to report the case. This is really the first outlet I saw that picked up the fact that the case has been dismissed. And I'm like, wait a second, how did I not see this First Amendment complaint in May? And we have been covering so much throughout the summer. Uh, it, I didn't pick it up and no one else picked it up either until Coach Monica made a statement on Instagram. And for that, I'm like, oh, I need, I need a better process to cover these things. She was dropped out of this thing back in May on the civil lawsuit. But if you remember this case, it wasn't just the civil lawsuit. The civil lawsuit went down and then USA Cheer, the governing body, uh, had suspended her from USA Cheer. And so there was still an investigative process going on through USA Cheer as well. So first we are going to go through uh, Monica's statement that was made on Instagram via people.com. And then we are going to go through the latest in the lawsuit and what allegations are remaining, what claims are remaining, and what Navarro College is doing now. So this is from Monica's uh, official Instagram account. And I am reading this from that. It's 10 o'clock PM and I'm just finding my voice today. I've been at a loss for words since 9 a.m. this morning. Today I have cried, I've laughed, I've felt incredible relief, but I have also been somewhat consumed by sadness and anger. This morning at about 9 a.m., USA Cheer, the organization that is the national governing body of the sport that I have given my heart and soul to for decades, sent my attorney, Russell Prince, an email informing him that the allegations that were made against me in April 26, 2023, lawsuit were being dismissed and that the complaint against me at USA Cheer was being closed. To be completely transparent, I'm going to go on to the next slide of this carousel post in just a second. What's interesting to me is that in the refiling of the lawsuit in May, it is clear that she has been dropped and I'm going to pull up Pacer and show you on the back end of the court system as well that it shows that as a defendant, Monica was terminated in May. So from May to November, the allegations that were in the lawsuit that sparked the investigation with USA Cheer have been ongoing, even though she's been terminated out of this lawsuit. Her post on Instagram continues, and she had said for transparency, this is quoting from what USA Cheer is saying to her, quote, we are writing to let you know the outcome of USA Cheer's investigation into the allegations stemming from the lawsuit involving Monica Aldama. USA Cheer's third-party investigators investigated the allegations, which included reviewing available documents, a meeting with potential witnesses, team members, and Ms. Aldama. After reviewing their findings, USA Cheer has concluded that the initial allegations of failure to report an abusive process are not supported by the information obtained in the investigation. Further, the allegation of failure to address historical systematic sexual abuse and misconduct within the Navarro cheer team are not supported by the information obtained in the investigation, end quote. It goes on to the next slide of her Instagram post saying, USA cheer suspended me on May 1st, 2023 without ever speaking with me. On May 15th, 2023, I was finally afforded a hearing on the suspension. My attorney provided a wealth of evidence to USA Cheer and the hearing panel. The hearing panel ruled that USA Cheer had 15 days to produce some evidence through their, quote, outside investigator to warrant my suspension because other than the baseless allegations made in the lawsuit, there wasn't any evidence of wrongdoing. In fact, there was conclusive evidence to the contrary. After 15 days, I still had not been contacted by the, quote, unquote, outside investigator for an interview. Therefore, I was reinstated with restrictions and allowed to coach under suspension and under a cloud that I had done something awful. It was as if the evidence provided to USA Cheer, evidence which conclusively proved the allegations were false, did not matter. Evidence be damned, guilty until proven innocent. It goes on to say on the next slide, quote, I patiently waited for my opportunity to be interviewed. 
Days turned into weeks, weeks turned into months. Unfortunately, the interview was apparently too big of an obstacle to manage. We made countless attempts and requests for an interview, but it didn't happen. Finally, late on Friday, November 3rd, I was able to have a formal interview with an independent investigator. I provided the investigator with all of the information that we had previously provided to USA Cheer. I assumed that the investigator took notes and drafted his conclusion and recommendations and sent them into the decision makers at USA Cheer. I don't know if the investigator works the weekends, but the case is closed today. Don't get me wrong, I am thankful for the decision that USA Cheer made, but why did it take over six months to ask me to confirm the record information that was already provided? I am sure they have their standard responses, but why deny me the right to an interview for six months? Why not interview me first? It isn't as though the investigators couldn't request a follow-up interview if needed. It goes on to say, quote, sadly, it makes me wonder if it wasn't just easier for USA Cheer to leave me suspended and or restricted. It's a valid question. The real problem is that during the six month delay, I was broken, a shell of myself. Navarro Cheer members were constantly attacked online. I was constantly attacked. I couldn't sleep. I couldn't eat. And most of the time, it was hard to even breathe. My family was broken, my athletes were broken, and there wasn't anything anyone could do but wait and watch time pass. The kids matter. Their voices and their experience matter. I have and will always be their biggest cheerleader. This post isn't meant to take away anyone's voice. Really, it's just me reminding myself that I too have a voice. USA Cheer has spent six months acting with complete ambivalence as to the harm it was helping perpetrate. It goes on to say, quote, moving forward, we must do better. We are all acutely aware of concerning issues in cheer. That's for an entire separate podcast, but there are lots of cheer lawsuits, not just revolving around cheer, the Netflix show and, and Navarro, but in the sport in general. Um, it goes on to say those issues need to be dealt with. Our athletes deserve to be listened to. They deserve to be safe. They deserve to be believed, agreed. However, participants caught up in matters such as these, specifically coaches, need to be treated with respect and fairness as well. I would call that due process. There needs to be due process. It goes on to say, it's true. This process have, has robbed me of countless opportunities inside and outside of the sport. The processes at USA Cheer need to be completely transparent. Like there needs to be due process. They need to be clearly articulated. They need to make sense. USA Cheer failed me. It doesn't have to fail everyone. Maybe USA Cheer would like to have an open discussion about it, its current position, and where it sees itself going. Maybe we should talk about everything. Did Coach Monica just say mention it all in her post about this? Like, why don't we have transparent processes and due process? I don't think she's wrong here. Maybe we should talk about everything. Maybe we should address those conflicts of interest. Oh, yep. Yep. Maybe we should address the decision-making process. The cheer community deserves to have answers to these questions. She goes on to say, we are trying to grow our sport. So if USA Cheer is interested in an open roundtable conversation, I have plenty of people who would be interested in producing it for the community to view. Transparency and accountability. These are qualities that truly define what makes a great federation. It's also what our community needs. And yes, if it isn't clear, I am angry and I am seeking answers. One way or another, accountability for what has transpired is coming. Is Monica going to sue? This sounds like Monica is going to sue USA Chair. It goes on to say, thank you, Russell Prince, for guiding me, supporting me, and fighting for what is right. That is her attorney who she is thanking at the end there. The thing that is different when you are dealing with organizations and not dealing with lawsuits is with lawsuits, there is a very clear process for court process. You know how the process is going to work. When you are dealing with independent governing bodies, and we have seen this with gymnastics as well, not just cheer, other sports as well. But when you are dealing with governing bodies, they are not always governed by the same clear process that the court system is governed by. And they cannot and do not always wait for court process to play out. And that can be a huge problem. 
However, I can also understand why waiting for a two or three or four year civil suit or criminal case to play out could also be a problem because how do you wait till the end of that, depending on what the allegations are, when you have athletes that you feel like you need to protect? But what are the conflicts of interest within cheerleading that might not be beneficial to it? So I think the fact for me that Monica was dismissed out of this lawsuit in May, but the investigation went on till November without there being a time period for her to have an interview. I can understand the tremendous frustration, but the cheerleaders at Navarro deserve to have answers. I think Maddie Lane, who brought the lawsuit, deserves to have answers. And I think Coach Monica and others deserve to have answers about that. So when process isn't transparent and can be wielded without transparency, you can end up with very, very big problems, including there not being adequate remedies to protect athletes. And we saw some of that in other cheerleading related lawsuits. We've seen people speak up and be silenced by organizations. So where, where is the right answer here? I'm always leaning into more transparency. That's where I'm leaning in. If there's confusion, make it more transparent. Give, have due process. The criminal court system and the civil court system not only is replete with rules, but timing and deadlines as well. You have this much time to do this, and if you don't, this happens. In, in numerous lawsuits that we're talking about right now, we've seen what happens when deadlines are missed. Um, in the TikTok defamation suit in Idaho, we've seen now the plaintiff in that suit, the university professor, ask for essentially a finding, a factual finding of liability because admissions are, are deemed admitted because deadlines were missed. When you have transparency and process, you know if you miss this deadline, this is the consequence. And so it's very clear. When waters are muddy, it allows a lot of room for fuckery, for corruption, and for abuse of the system and abuse of process. So with all of that, we're going to go to the place where I like to ground myself, the court documents. Emily, why do you why do you cover things when they make it to court? Because there's process. This is why I cover things that have made their way to court because we know there's going to be a process. We know that there's going to be a complaint and an answer and, you know, pre-answer litigation and then a trial date and then a settlement or a dismissal or motions to dismiss or motions for summary judgment. We know what the process is going to be. When you're dealing with regulatory bodies, those processes are not clear, they are not always transparent, and oftentimes they are not public. So even though the lawsuit was very public and the headlines were everywhere, and Monica gave statements to the media denying the allegations in the lawsuit that she did not fail to report what happened, that she was not allowing for a systemic covering up of abuses in her cheer program. She wasn't failing her athletes. That's what she said to the media at the time and then went pretty silent. But she was dismissed out of this thing in May and I went back looking for um, anything that covered her being removed and dismissed out of this lawsuit in May. And I couldn't find much at all until she spoke up on social media and then that got picked up. People also reached out to Navarro College for a statement. So I'm gonna include that before we move on to what's going on in Pacer. But Navarro's statement to people is simply this. Navarro denies any allegations of wrongdoing and is prepared to vigorously defend itself in court. So that is what Navarro is saying. Let's go to Pacer and take a look at what happened in this suit. But first, I should thank our sponsor. You know I've been on the go a lot and the makeup that has been coming with me and keeping me going is Thrive Cosmetics. You've heard me talk a ton about Thrive, not just because the products work amazing, but because they use ingredients that are good for your skin and they're cruelty-free and vegan. One of the things that keeps me going for very long days on the go 
is the Liquid Lash Extensions Mascara. I was not sure what to expect from this formula when I first tried it, but it really does coat your lashes to make them look longer and then wipe right off with warm water. I don't use makeup remover to remove any of my eye makeup. And between the Brilliant Eye Brightener and the Liquid Extensions Mascara, it all comes off so nicely at the end of the day, making not just my skin happy, but my eyes happy. But it's also one less thing I have to pack. And remember, Thrive gives back all year long by donating a part of every purchase made. And right now you can get 20% off your first order when you go to thrivecosmetics.com slash lawnard. Thrive Cosmetics, C-A-U-S-E. M-E-T-I-C-S dot com slash Lawnard for 20% off your first order. All right, let's get back to the show. So when I pull up this case in Pacer, this is the Lane versus Navarro College. I have pulled up right into the case and you can see the different parties, the attorneys that they're represented by. And as you pull into this, it has defendant Navarro College and their attorneys. And then it has defendant Monica Aldama, terminated may 26 2023 michael landers terminated may 26 2023 elizabeth pillins terminated may 26 2023 and then you have the other defendant salvatore amico also known as salvo and then their attorney's information so when that first amended complaint was filed it made very clear that the parties were amended as well and even when you go to the amended complaint that was filed May 26, it says amended complaint with jury demand against Salvatore Amico Navarro College filed by Maddie Lane, one or more defendants is no longer named. So it's notified multiple places within the court filing system that Coach Monica is no longer a plaintiff in this suit. That was done on May 26th. What I find very interesting is in Monica's statement on Instagram, she indicates that all of the evidence that they turned over was turned over on May 15th when she had the hearing. So when we're looking at this lawsuit, the original lawsuit is filed on April 26th. She's suspended on May 1st by USA Cheer. There is a USA Cheer hearing on May 15th. Because they are overlapping actions, I have to make the assumption that either Maddie Lane or Maddie Lane's attorneys had access to or were at that hearing. And then the three parties who I previously mentioned were dismissed from that lawsuit on May 25th when it was refiled. So when that was refiled on May 26th, what, 10 days after this hearing, 10, 11 days after this hearing, they were removed. I have to wonder if the hearing is why the plaintiff in this case chose to change their filing because originally they had filed causes of action um, for violations of title nine deprivations of rights violations under the texas constitution and then a civil assault against the individual defendant salvatore amico but after the hearing you only have the title nine violation against the college and then the assault against the individual defendant, Amico. You don't have any of those other charges. And I just have to wonder again if that hearing is why. And if that hearing was enough for the plaintiff to alter their suit and their lawsuit and change what they were doing, what was missing for USA Cheer? At the end of the day, it looks like they are trying to kind of rectify what happened in the past. And I don't know if um, Salvatore Amico will be held liable for the assault or not, because that hasn't finished its process yet. But even taking the complaint at face value, there are still some difficulties with the Title IX claims, and there were difficulties with the claims against Coach Monica. Did Monica know and or should have known before the alleged assault happened to stop it from happening, prevent it from happening, protect her cheerleaders. Was there enough there? Um, was this a culture of silence that she was in fact the one perpetrating that? And that's what the university is arguing now. So we need to take a look at what's going on in this lawsuit as we 
um, kind of wrap up what is still happening in this lawsuit. Because though Coach Monica and the other coaching staff are no longer a part of this lawsuit, Navarro University is still a part of this lawsuit. And then the individual uh, defendant, Amico, is still a part of this lawsuit. So in looking at what is currently going on in this lawsuit, I am looking at something filed on June 23rd, 2023. And that is the Navarro College partial motion to dismiss the first amended complaint. Navarro is asking to be dismissed out of the first amended complaint, alleging that they had no knowledge that there was any issue with uh, Salvatore Amico prior to the alleged assault of Maddie Lane, and therefore the university could not have done anything to prevent this from happening because they had no knowledge before this incident. And so to find them Title IX liability, we're gonna go through their summary of their argument. So Navarro College is not arguing that this didn't happen. Navarro College is arguing that they did not know or could not have foreseen that this could happen because this is not someone who had been complained of in the past. So I'm going to talk about a little bit of the Title IX. I'm not going to get heavily into the facts of this case. I went into them um, last time and reiterating them is not super helpful for our purposes today. Um, it's an alleged sexual assault. So if you are interested in that, again, when I covered the original complaint, the allegations haven't changed in either complaint. The parties have narrowed down a bit. So let's get into this motion to dismiss just a little bit. Navarro College argues that Title IX imposes liability based on a school's intentional sexual discrimination, not because it enrolled a student who engaged in sexual misconduct. Navarro College may be liable under Title IX only if appropriate school official with authority to stop the harassment had actual knowledge of sexual harassment and responded with deliberate indifference. So if a student had been complained about in the past and the school did nothing about it, it's a different situation than the school's behavior after something happens. That's their argument. They say here the complaint contains no facts that Navarro College had any actual knowledge of any misconduct by Amico before September 2021. This does not allow for a reasonable inference that the college responded with deliberate indifference to a known risk of sexual abuse posed by Amico to Lane or any other Navarro College student. The complaint does nothing to show that the college officially decided not to remedy the known risk that Amico would sexually assault Lane. Accordingly, Lane's Title IX claimed that the college was deliberately indifferent to a risk of harm prior to the alleged sexual assault, often referred to as pre-assault or pre-report or before the fact deliberate indifference, should be dismissed for failure to state a plausible claim for relief. So Navarro College is arguing that because they didn't know or have complaints about Amico prior to this happening, under Title IX, there's nothing they could have done to prevent it because they had no knowledge that there was something to prevent. They go on to make very clear that the complaint also alleges that in the years before Lane attended Navarro College, there were, quote, four nationally publicized scandals involving sexual misconduct related to the cheer team. According to the complaint, in 2018, a former cheerleader sued the college and alleged in his lawsuit that another former cheer coach had, quote, drugged and sexually assaulted a cheerleader at a competition and would slap and hit male cheerleaders, made male cheerleaders drop their pants on command, and more. The complaint alleges in 2020, a former Navarro, Navarro College cheerleader, Jerry Harris, was indicted for soliciting sexual and explicit photos from minors at cheerleading competitions, pled guilty, and was sentenced to 12 years in prison. Additionally, the complaint alleges that in February 2021, another cheerleader was arrested and charged with aggravated sexual assault of a minor, whom Ryan allegedly invited to his apartment to practice cheer stunts. The complaint also alleges that in February 2021, a former Navarro College cheer athlete and choreographer was arrested and charged with taking indecent liberties with a child and soliciting sex using an electronic communication device. So even though the university is acknowledging 
that there had been past issues related to the cheer program. What they are arguing is that it is not the cheer program, it is the individuals, and that they did not know that the individual in this case was an issue. So they are trying to say that they did not have a duty to protect Maddie Lane or or other students at the university from the defendant in this case because they didn't know where the complaint is trying to say, but this cheer program has problems. These are all of the issues that are going on, which can be argued to be representative of some of the issues going on within cheer in a broader way because there are lots of other lawsuits. So essentially the university is saying, we didn't know anything about Salvatore Amico, so we did not violate our Title IX duties. And the complaint is saying, but look at all of these other issues within the cheer program. You knew that this was a broader issue, even if you didn't know specifically about this one cheerleader. So you did in fact act with indifference because you didn't do anything. So those are the arguments here. The university is bringing this motion as a motion to dismiss. So this is a 12B6 motion to dismiss. And as law nerds, as you well know, they look at everything in the complaint and take it at face value. Even if all of this is true, the university's argument is there is not enough to state a claim for relief. And the argument that is going to be coming from Maddie Lane is going to be, I have pled enough to survive this motion to dismiss. The reason this is a partial motion to dismiss is because the university is not asking to dismiss anything with regard to the other defendant. And the university is not asking about any claims that happened after the alleged assault in September 2021. They're asking that any part of the claim that is alleging failure to act before September 2021 be dismissed. So this is a, a nuanced kind of paring down or the university is asking for a paring down of the allegations. And we are going to take a minute to take a look at the response to this by plaintiff Maddie Lane to the motion to dismiss after we thank our sponsor. Thank you to our sponsor, Honey Love. Not only are you going to be feeling snatched this holiday season, but you're going to be comfortable doing it. This is the best of both worlds for me. You know comfort is key. They've got bras that have all of the lift without the underwire and shapewear that uses targeted compression so you're feeling supported in all the right places. If you are looking for one thing that will make the holiday seasons a bit smoother, absolutely try the Super Power Short. It has targeted compression technology that distinguishes between areas where you want more support and areas where you need less compression. You know, it doesn't squish your curves. And their Signature X targets and sculpts your midsection without squeezing your natural curves. And because it has boning in the side seams, it does not roll up or down in the way that you don't want it to. There is nothing worse than tugging on your shapewear all night long. So treat yourself to the best bras and shapewear on the market with up to 50% off site-wide at honeylove.com slash lawnard this month only. Inventory is limited and the sale ends soon, so do not miss their absolute best deals of the year. And after you purchase, they're going to ask you where you heard about them. Feel free to share the love for The Emily Show and tell them we sent you. Head to honeylove.com slash lawnard and save up to 50% off site-wide. It's time to have shapewear that's comfortable because comfort is key. Let's get back to today's show. The beginning of the opposition from plaintiff Maddie Lane to the motion to dismiss filed by Navarro College starts with uh, the summary of the argument. This case arises from the sexual assault of plaintiff Maddie Lane, a former Navarro College student and member of its cheer team, by fellow student and cheerleader Salvatore Amico in Lane's on-campus dorm room. Defendant Navarro College moved for a partial dismissal of plaintiff's claims against it, contending the first amended complaint does not sufficiently plead that the college was deliberately indifferent to a risk of harm prior to the sexual assault. As demonstrated below, plaintiff has alleged facts showing that defendant had actual knowledge 
of a substantial risk that sexual abuse would occur, and it was deliberately indifferent to that risk, which is the standard they are trying to meet here. Therefore, defendant's motion should be denied. And then they reiterate not just what's going on in cheer that we just talked about, the fact that it that uh, Navarro is a national championship program, that they were in the Netflix documentary titled Cheer, um, and it goes through the other issues that they laid out in the complaint that I went over in detail. Some of those allegations were reiterated by the college saying, hey, there have been these four other instances of, of issues with the program. Should the university have not done something else to protect members in the program or to deal with issues within the program when there had been these multiple lawsuits? And the reason they're arguing that they were national headlines is because it lends towards the fact that the university knew exactly what was going on. There's no way to argue the university wasn't aware of the arrest and conviction through a guilty plea of Jerry Harris and other lawsuits that had gone on. That allegation is pretty succinctly summarized by the plaintiff saying, for years preceding plaintiff's arrival at campus, Navarro College permitted a cheer program rife with sexual assault and sexual harassment. In addition, Navarro College knowingly lacked basic standards of support for victims of sexual assault and sexual harassment as required by federal law which is the heart of their argument against this motion to dismiss. Plaintiff Maddie Lane spends a lot of time in this, well, through lawyers, in this opposition and response talking about essentially what they talked about in the complaint. These are the different high profile issues. This is what happened to this plaintiff and the university was aware of these things. When they get into the Title IX legal argument, they say, quote, Title IX is enforceable by private right of action, which is why we see this civil suit being brought by a private individual. And then they say through it, school districts are liable for student on student sexual harassment where, one, the district had actual knowledge of the harassment. Two, the harasser was under the district's control. Three, the harassment was based on the victim's sex. Four, the harassment was so severe, pervasive, or objectively offensive that it effectively barred the victim's access to an educational opportunity or benefit. And five, the district was deliberately indifferent to the harassment. Though I think there's a typo in the way they spelled indifferent here, to the harassment. And this is where the university is saying, again, we weren't deliberately indifferent before it happened because we didn't know before it happened that this could happen. And they're arguing again, you knew that this was a problem within this program and you did not nearly enough to protect members of this program and to support them in this way. So when you get to the initial stages of this, did the district have knowledge? That's where you see the plaintiff pleading that these were broadly publicized scandals and lawsuits, and of course they had knowledge. Was the harasser under the district's control? Was that person a student there? Yes, they were a student and a member of the cheer team at the time this happened. Did this happen because this victim is a woman because of the the sex of this individual so when you're arguing a sexual assault i don't i don't even know if they would argue prong three at all four the harassment was so severe pervasive and objectively offensive and again when you get through a sexual assault if they find the sexual assault liable then obviously that type of harassment is a severe and pervasive harassment and then five, the district was deliberately indifferent. And that's where you're gonna see most of the arguing in this case is on that prong five from the school saying we did not know. So they go on to succinctly say, the district challenges the first and fifth elements, actual knowledge and deliberate indifferent in their motion. To be liable under Title IX, an educational institution must have actual knowledge that harassment has occurred, is occurring, or that there is a substantial risk that sexual abuse would occur. An educational institution has actual knowledge when the knowledge is acquired by a school official with the duty to supervise and the power to take action and remedy the wrongdoing. Deliberate indifference requires the institution's response to be so clearly unreasonable in light of the known circumstances. What makes a response reasonable depends on the facts of each case they cite. And then they go on to say plaintiff has alleged a litany of facts demonstrating defendants actual knowledge and deliberate indifference. And a lot of those facts are the background of other things that have happened within this cheer program and who they were reported to at the school 
as lined out in the complaint, because again, this is a 12B6 motion to dismiss, you take all the complaint facts as true. And so you look at them in the light most favorable to the non-moving party here, the plaintiff. So if the court assumes all of those things are true, then these prongs are met is the argument here. And I think they will survive that argument um, on this motion to dismiss. When we get into the deliberate indifference prong, the response from the plaintiff here says, Navarro's response to the risk of sexual abuse and harassment to cheerleaders by fellow cheerleaders was clearly unreasonable in light of the circumstances. Defendant was deliberately indifferent to and actively created a culture of sexual violence and harassment within its cheer program by instituting policies and permitting practices that included failing to properly train, supervise, and educate coaches, staff, and students. Navarro coaches permitted, sanctioned, and encouraged earning the letters FIO, FMU, which included students engaging in acts of sexual abuse or harassment. This is something that they brought up in the complaint about the university, about the cheer program, and about this almost like secret society culture of the cheer program. I don't know if they're going to be able to tie this into that. And yes, I did have to go back to the complaint to refresh my recollection as to what the FIO FMU stands for. FIO FMU, according to the first amended complaint, stands for fight it out, fuck them up, or fuck them up. However, as someone who participated in Division I college athletics, fuck them up is not an uncommon rallying cry amongst athletes. I, I, I just don't know if, if that rallying cry applies here, if that makes sense. Does their fight it out, fuck them up, I don't know, letters that you earn mean anything beyond going above and beyond their, above and beyond your own, you know, tolerance for sport to to be an athlete in this program i don't know if it points to a culture of violence between the members of this team but we will see the court is going to take it as meaning that the court is going to take it the way it is pled the way it is pled in this lawsuit is that shows that students are encouraged to engage in harassment and abuse they go on to say that Navarro maintained a policy of not reporting, not addressing, and covering up allegations of sexual violence and harassment within the cheer program. And again, the court has to take these things as true for a motion to dismiss. And if that's true, and you have cheerleaders who are reporting um, violence and harassment and nothing is being done about it, then the school has a very large problem. And it's pled that way in the complaint. So for a motion to dismiss, it's going to be taken as true. They go on to say that it prioritized its cheer program's reputation over the safety and well-being of its cheerleaders. It repeatedly failed to hold perpetrators accountable and to promptly and appropriately prevent, investigate, and respond to prior instances of sexual assault and sexual harassment. Which is why I don't think this motion to dismiss is going to get all that far, because they do plead that in the complaint, repeatedly. They go on to say that Navarro lacked basic standards of support for victims of sexual assault and sexual harassment, as required by federal law. Say Navarro's Title IX office did not maintain the proper documentation to report a sexual assault, and neither the Title IX office nor the campus police department kept a rape kit on hand. I, I have so many questions. I had questions when this came up in the complaint, and I have questions now. Unless the police department does not have anyone trained to use them, unless the Title IX office does not have anyone trained to use them, but then one would hope that there would be a local, a local medical provider that would be trained to, to take rape kits and to make sure that that is available when this is reported in a easy way for victims. It goes on to say, Emily, keep reading. Navarro knew through its Title IX coordinator that the Regional Medical Center does not have an SANE registered nurse and that the closest uh, rape kit available would require to drive to Waco or Dallas, Texas. And that becomes a larger problem when they're talking about 
the university not having a reporting standard and not having a way to report that, that having victims drive, and I don't know how far Waco is from Navarro or Dallas is from Navarro, but the way that they are alleging it is that this is a substantial inconvenience to victims. And so it is something that won't properly get reported because they're like, well, we can't do that for you. Nothing we can do to help. And that is part of the argument here that they are not maintaining the ability to even take reports. They're like, oh, well, we can't, we can't do it. It goes on to say, Navarro's campus police department was located right next to the area where cheerleaders would practice. And according to the campus police, sexual assaults like plaintiffs occur and are reported all the time and no corrective action is ever taken. So they are saying campus police is reporting to them that this happens on campus and the campus does nothing about it. Those are the Title IX claims that we are going to see play out here. Even though Navarro College is trying to distance themselves and get those claims dismissed, I don't think on this complaint those claims will be dismissed. When they take everything as true in this complaint, I think this complaint has been properly pled and it will go forward through the court process. Of course, Navarro is going to say that all of those things combined is not enough to sustain the complaint. I disagree. And we already have this going through the scheduling order, though we don't have a ruling on the motion to dismiss. Um, is this an issue on college campuses beyond Navarro College? Absolutely. Are we going to see more lawsuits like this against colleges? Absolutely. Have we already seen multitudes of lawsuits like this against universities? Absolutely. Because shouldn't one of the fundamental principles of a university be to keep their student population safe? Absolutely. It is distressing to me that it's still taking litigation for assaults on campuses to be taken seriously um, and to be handled seriously and to go through due process. Allow allow for victims to make reports and to preserve evidence in a way that is accessible to them. They have been traumatized. If they are coming to you to report this, they have been traumatized. Making it difficult, if, especially if you don't have a car, making it difficult or impossible for them to preserve that evidence is going to make it very difficult for them to prosecute cases and make it difficult to move forward. And if the university is just throwing up its hand going, oh, well, I mean, I guess you could drive to Waco. I don't see how that helps. There needs to be due process through all of this where reports can be made and evidence can be gathered in a way that allows the court process to play out when assaults are reported and in a way that keeps students safe. And I think that's where we see this parallel between not just this lawsuit, but also Coach Monica's frustration with USA Cheer. When we are lacking due process, things can get very, very frustrating. And that is what we are seeing in this case, that this victim did not feel supported by the process at the school, still does not feel supported and has sued the school over it, and that Coach Monica does not feel supported by USA Cheer. And whatever came forward in that hearing seems to me to have been enough to remove Coach Monica and the other coaching staff from this lawsuit all the way back in May, 2023. So to wrap this case up, there is a trial set for January 6th, 2025. So this case will be going forward against Navarro Cheer and against former cheerleader uh, Salvatore Amico. Set for trial January 2025, it will be going through the process of discovery before then. Could it settle before it goes to trial? Yes. Will there be more litigation before it goes to trial? Absolutely. Will we see a ruling on this motion to dismiss at some point? Yes. The um, the replies were just filed on this, so I imagine it's going to be a little bit before we see a ruling on this motion to dismiss, but these are just the beginning stages of litigation in this case. There will be more litigation coming. Let me know if you would like me to keep following along with what's going on in this lawsuit. I tend to do cases um, that can be 
potentially difficult for the audience on the podcast and not just lumped in with a live stream. So we have a little bit more time to talk about them and a little time to look at the legal side of what is going on in allegations that a university has not protected a student. And that is, is the heart of this lawsuit against Navarro College. Let me know your thoughts on it. Let me know if this was a helpful breakdown of everything that's going on. And let me know how you feel about more transparency in regulatory bodies like, I don't know, the State Bar of California, USA Cheer, USA Gymnastics, and others. And with that, thank you for being here. Thank you for being a Lawnard. I will see you around the live streams and on the YouTubes. And with that, may your family be well. May your toilet paper be plentiful. May your fall not be too freezing cold because the weather has shifted drastically. May your family be well and may the odds be ever in your favor. Leonard, I will see you in the next one. You can stay up to date with everything I'm covering on our free iOS and Android app at lawnerdapp.com or search your app store for Lawnerd. And you can also follow me on social media at the Emily D. Baker. Remember, I stream on YouTube on Tuesdays and Thursdays. I recap all of that for you in quick bits on Monday. And of course, The Emily Show drops on Wednesdays. Thanks for being a Lawnerd.